This demonstration is the basic six gore skirt. The gored skirt is made up of shaped panels fitted at the waist and over the form of the figure to any chosen level from which flare may be added. The level at which the flare begins is referred to as the flare point. Because the seams visually break up the figure, it has a slimming effect. The seams also give you the opportunity to add silhouette variation. For example, in the slim skirt, or the flare skirt, or a combination of fitted to full, as in this tulip skirt. Seams may also be used to add design by adding pleats. And fabric can be used in an interesting way. The shape of the pattern can be wedge-shaped, as in the basic, or can take on unexpected forms, uh, depending upon the styling of the seams. Uh, there may be any number of panels, but the six-score skirt is made up of three panels in the front and three in the back. The panel in the back may be split for the addition of a zipper. Each panel starts in the basic with a straight grain in the center of the panel, add, moving to bias at the side seam, which can be slight or not so slight, depending upon the silhouette. The spacing of the style seams can be even or not. For this demonstration, we will follow the uh, seaming of the princess seams uh, in anticipation of matching it up to the princess bodice. The objective of the skirt is to start draping with the position of the grain at the hip level, length grain, cross grain, smoothing up to the waist, over to the style seam, and down to the flare point, which in the basic I will uh, use one inch, about one inch above the hip level. And then fanning out to a flare towards the hem. The length grains will match at the seam perpendicular and the cross grain will be parallel to the floor all around the figure. To prepare the figure, if you were not using the princess seams or if you didn't like the way the princess seams were shaped, you would use tape pinning from the waist down to the, at least the flare point. For example, if I wanted the seams to be shaped back here. And placing it on the figure. Down to the flare point and cutting the tape. Or some unusual pattern. You would need seam tape. Uh, you can also put in tape for the hip level. And some teachers may ask you uh, to do it that way, or you may prefer to do it that way. Or you can drape without uh, the uh, hip level. In preparation for the muslin, We'll first measure the length of the skirt, right, which you don't have. The length of the skirt plus two inches above 
the waist and about two inches for the hem. So it's length plus four inches. Then take a piece of muslin, full width, the length we just measured, and come down from the top of the muslin nine inches and draw the cross grain all the way across. You may need more than one piece depending upon the fullness of the skirt. For each panel, we measure the widest part of the panel, starting with the undraped figure. Measure at the widest part of the panel, plus two inches for seam allowance, plus flare. Uh, flare. Right, if you don't know how much flare you want, uh, then be a little more generous on the amount of flare, uh, flare addition that you add to the panel. So in this panel, this is the widest part, plus two inches for the seams on each side, plus flare. On the second panel, measure again from the widest part. Again, we're using the princess seams of the figure. Plus two inches for seam allowance, plus flare for both sides. So if you are thinking of three inches flare, you add three inches, another three inches. And then just a little bit more to allow for any changes in the silhouette. The same thing for the back panel and the center back panel. The back side panel, center back. This illustration shows the muslin piece separated into the individual gore blocks. Be sure to draw the length grains on each panel, one inch from the edge at the center front and center back panels and at the center of each side panel. We begin draping with the center front panel, starting at the hip level, at the center front, smoothing up to the waist, securing the rest of the center front. Remember to fold back the center front seam allowance. Smoothing across the hip, making sure the hip line is parallel to the floor. From the center front over to the style line, which in this case is the princess seam, down to the flare point, which for the basic, as I said before, will be one inch above the hip level. Dot the waistline. Cross mark the waist at the style seam. And dot along the outside edge of the style seam, which is the princess seam down to, all the way down to the hip line. Then remove the muslin from the figure for truing. Measuring up one inch from the hip level, which will be our flare point. Come out about an eighth of an inch for ease. Then using the hip curve, shift the curve of the ruler until it touches the waist, follows most of the dots. straight on through to the eighth of an inch out.
be sure to cross mark at the flare point. At the hip line, drop a line down parallel to the center front. You can measure over from the center front or use the pencil. to make the parallel line. Dropping a line all the way down to the hem as a guide for the flare. All right, from the hip, the dot at the hip, all the way down to the hem. Add one inch seam allowance to the shaped part of the hip down to the flare point. Do not true the waistline at this point at this time. And clip all the way to the flare point. Placing the panel back on the figure before draping the second panel. Sink a pin in at the hip level. so that we can fold back the allowance for the flare to leave enough um, so that it won't interfere with the draping of the side front panel. We begin draping the side front panel at the hip level, trying to center the grain line in the center of the panel. Sink a pin in at the hip level to match the hip level. Oops, sorry. Stand back to make sure that the line is straight. Put ease in across the hip line. Make sure the ease is all the way down the panel. Place only as many pins as necessary. And to make sure that the panel is draped straight, look to see that the flare allowance is parallel in the, from the side panel to the front panel. Then continue by draping the grain line straight up the figure. Anchoring it into position. And then fitting over the style line of the center front panel. Working from the hip up to the waist. Because of the curve of the figure, you will get excess material here, which can be turned into a dart. Same thing at the side seam, smoothing up the figure. 
again, the excess material. And all of that may be removed and put into a dart after a pinch of ease is added. All right, let me place this back in position. And we'll decide what else to do with that dartfulness. Some of it can be eased out as much as you can, but be sure not to get a bubble over the seam line or over the style line. Again, the same thing at the side seam, getting rid of much of that fullness. And depending upon the prominence of the hip, you will get more or less fullness. In the, in the side panel. Then we can distribute the fullness into ease. Before dotting the figure, dotting the muslin. All right, dot the style. style line or seam line. Up to the waist, dot the waist. Cross mark at the side seam and at the style seam and dot the rest of the hip. at the side seam all the way down to the hip level. Then remove from the figure. At the hip level, since we're using one inch up from the hip level for flare, come out at the dot, one eighth of an inch for ease on both sides, at the style seam and at the side seam. Take the hip curve so that it follows most of the dots down to the Flare point. Leave the waistline for later. And I'll leave the side seam for the moment um, in order to drop the grain lines. Drop a grain line from the style seam straight down. to the hem. Parallel to the center grain of the muslin. Do the same thing at the side seam. All right, I'm measuring from from the center line of the panel, which is the grain. And dropping a, a line parallel to the center line. Then take the back side panel matching it to the front panel at the hip level and at the center grain. Mm -hmm. 
all the way across on both sides. Muslin should be parallel front panel to back panel at each seam. Then check to see that the pins are accurate. And using carbon paper, you can trace the side seam at the same time as truing it. Use the hip curve, curving out to the eighth of an inch ease at the side seam, flare point. All right, the grain line is already in. I'm going to uh, use a tracing wheel because the marker I'm using doesn't mark all the way through. Cross mark the waist. Cross mark the flare point. And if everything is very accurate, you can also trace through the line which we dropped from the hip. That's the flare guideline. And while it's still together, add seam allowance, one inch. to the flare point. Both uh, at the side seam and uh, at the front seam. Cutting only the side seam together with the panel. Clipping over to the flare point. All right, the back is traced and cut at the side seam only. Turning this back we can cut the other seam allowance. And if you tend to make mistakes very easily, you should cut this before putting the back side panel together with the front. Again, clipping in to the flare point. Then it's ready to be put back on the figure. There are different variations on the sequence of draping the panels. This is just one of them, I think, one that will help you see what happens a little more easily. <laughs> 
broken in the E's. And, and just allow the uh, side panel to rest over the front panel. Secure the side seam and fold back the flare. And then take the back side panel, folding back the side seam, make it a little bit easier. And begin pinning at the hip level up to the waist. Laying the back side panel over the front. And before securing the position of the hip level, you can match up uh, th the amount of fabric we left for the flare with the front side panel parallel if not meeting. Then place the hip line in position so that it's straight. Allow a quarter of an inch ease across the hip. Step back from the figure to make sure the line is straight. Secure the ease down the figure. And then beginning draping from the hip level. Up to the waist. Again, allowing the excess, which can be turned into a dart or ease. Right, before you turn it into a dart, pull in a pinch of ease. And the dart may be placed where the figure most requires it, not necessarily on the center line of the panel, like so. I'm uh, taking the dart and throwing it into ease so I can try to pull out a little bit more, as long as I don't get a lump over the style line. And then the excess into ease. Dot the figure starting from the star line at the hip level. Up the star line to the waistline. Cross mark at the waist and dot the rest of the waist in between all of the E's. Then remove the panel from the figure for truing. Again, at the hip level, come up one inch for the flare point. Come out from our dot about an eighth of an inch for ease. 
using the hip curve to true the line down to the flare point through the waist. Drop a line parallel to the center line of the panel, which is the length grain. Add seam allowance to the trude curve down to the flare point cut away and clip into the flare point Now it's ready to be placed back on the figure. Again, back in the original position. Fold back the flare allowance on the grain line. Pin the ease back into position. And we're ready to drape the back panel. Remember to fold back the center back by finger creasing. Never press, because that will stretch the seam. Again, we begin draping from the hip level at the center back. Securing the center back up to the waist, over the side panel at the waistline and smoothing down to the flare point. Make sure the flare allowance is parallel to the flare allowance at, on the side panel. And dot. Cross mark at the waist and dot the rest of the waistline, cross marking at the center back. Ready to take off the figure for truing. Come up one inch from the hip level at the flare point. Come out one eighth of an inch for ease. Take the hip curve. 
and true. The line down to the flare point. Drop a line from the hip level parallel to the center back. as a guide for the flare. Allow one inch seam allowance to the curved line. And cut. Right, this was a little more flare than I had on the uh, back side panel, so I can take away some of that flare, two inches, to make it a little bit easier to see what we're doing. Clip into the flare point. Fold back the seam and place back on the figure. Right, at this point, you can pin the straight grain together from the hip line down. To estimate the flare. Right, with these pieces uh, coming out from the form, you can fold back a little bit to see how much flare you would like to add at the hem, approximately. If this is what I want, then I'm really asking for two inches flare, and I will do that on each panel for the basic flare uh, six score skirt. Now I draped, starting with the center front panel, front side panel, back side panel, and the center back panel. But you can drape in a different sequence, draping center front and side panel, and center back panel, and then side panel. Uh, that would only be easy to do if you had the style tape for the hip line. All right, for the flare, uh, I have, I've added two inches uh, for hem allowance. So my flare point will start, uh, my flare at the, at the hem will be two inches up from the bottom. I'll mark that off on the center front panel. Removing the pins 
coming out two inches at the hem. And truing the line from the flare point down through the hem. Cut the rest of the seam allowance. And together with the side panel, and I'll explain why I separated the pieces in a moment. Making sure the grain lines, the guidelines for the flare are pinned together and the flare point. Trace through the flare from the front panel. to the side panel, down to the hem. And cut the seam allowance. Now you can do that without separating the pieces. I just wanted to emphasize that the flare is coming from the flare point, not from the hip level. Then pin the pieces together, folding front. Folding front seam allowance over the side panel. And the rest of the front panel down to the hem. Now the reason why we didn't true the waistline earlier was just in case in the pinning together uh, you needed a little more room and the waistlines no longer matched in a flowing line, you would be able to do it after the whole, all of the seams are pinned together, then true the waistline. Or we could true to the side seam at this point. All right, so if I true the side, the uh, waistline, I true squaring from the center front for about one inch, then taking the hip curve and blending a line following the dots. And the shape of the figure calls for a curve that goes up 
so the hip curve doesn't follow that curve too well, and you can change the curve and make sure it's a smooth flowing line, making any adjustments that are necessary. Then cut down to one inch seam allowance for the waistline. For the side seam, panels are already conveniently pinned together. Pin them together all the way down. Pin the flare points together. And true in the flare, coming out two inches at the hem for the flare. In this case, I'm using two inches. Connecting up to the flare point. Adding one inch seam allowance to the flare. And then pinning the pieces together. For the back panel, again, pin the guidelines for the flare. Accurately. Pin the flare points together. Come out two inches at the hem for the flare. Connect to the flare point. Add one inch seam allowance. Trace. And pin the center back panel over the side back panel. Pinning at the hip line, at the flare point. Up to the waistline and before pinning the bottom half, true the waistline. Starting with a line squared from the center back, blending into a curved line. Seam allowance at the waist. Pin together at the waistline. 
down. Before working on the hem, um, we'd like to identify each panel because when they're actually cut in fabric, uh, there are no markings on it which say this is the center front and that's the side panel and that's the back side panel. The pieces tend to look alike in the basic skirt. So we'll place cross marks. The hip level can serve as a cross mark between the center front panel and the side front panel. On the side seam, place two cross marks about three-eighths of an inch or half inch apart. But don't place it at the same level. Should one cross mark or one notch disappear, this panel would look exact this panel would look exactly like this panel. So place the cross marks, even though there are two of them, at a different level. And if the skirt is very long, you can place another cross mark further down to keep from stretching the bias. From this back side panel to the front, you can place three cross marks again at a different level. Now for the truing of the hem, we go back to the hip line, which will be our guide since we were so careful to drape it parallel to the floor all around the figure. Uh, I said that we had a two inch, I left about a two inch hem. So if I measure the same distance at the center front and on the guideline for the flare, making a straight line. To the guideline for the flare only. And then pivoting from the flare point, into the flare. For the rest of the hem in the flare section, since that will curve up depending upon the amount of flare. Very carefully pivoting the same measurement using the flare point as your pivot point. Then the same measurement across using the hip line as your guide to the other guide line for the flare, which is on length grain. I can continue truing the hem. It's a straight line in the straight section of the skirt. Again, using the flare point as a pivoting point, measure evenly. to allow for the curving of the hem in the flare. And continue to the back hem in the same manner. And truing in the rest of the hem. In a smooth, flowing line. Adjust the hem allowance so that it's even all around. 
the hem can be an inch and a half or a little bit more. And then fold up the hem. Finger creasing. And placing the pins so that they are parallel to the length grain. Right, now you notice I've pinned the back panel and then when I started pinning the back side panel I started pinning from the center of the back side panel working towards the seam because there is excess since the pattern is wedge shaped and now the hem is coming up back into the wedge so we have to compensate for that by tapering the hem evenly on both sides to shape in. And mark that so that it can be trued again. Again, continuing along, we repeat the process on the front part of the skirt. Of course, the hemline, the line that I drew in, serves as a guide for pinning it up right now. Later when the panels are apart and it's in fabric, you need to have a cross mark to show how much hem allowance there is. So at each, on each seam, there should be a cross mark to mark the hem. All right, coming back to the whole skirt, we should mark each pattern piece, identifying it for cutting. Mark the length grain using a red pencil as a guide. You can use the center front. since it is a length grain, to mark the grain with the arrow and the cutting information. Cut one on fold. All right, marking the grain line for the side panel using the center of the panel. Arrows indicating length grain. Cut two. Back side panel. Cut two. And the center back. Which, if it's, uh, if there is a zipper being inserted, will also have to be cut into two pieces. And if the zipper is coming into the side seam, the center back can be on the fold. I'm going to write cut two. Satisfied with all the markings, 
fold back the center front and the center back and place back on the figure. And that's the completed skirt.